Before we look at this in more detail, let's review the fundamentals of basic aerodynamics. In straight and level flight, the vertical forces acting on the aircraft are the weight, which acts through the center of gravity, the upward lift, which is generated primarily by the wing, and the downward lift generated by the horizontal stabilizer. The center of gravity, which is also the aircraft's pivot point, is almost always forward of the wing center of lift. The forces acting at these two points cause a nose-down pitching moment, which must be counteracted by the horizontal tail. To achieve the required downward lift, the tailplane is designed as an upside-down wing. When the flaps are extended, several things happen simultaneously. The wing center of lift moves aft, creating a larger nose-down pitching moment that the horizontal stabilizer must overcome. The tail angle of attack increases. This is due to the increased wing downwash, which naturally generates more downward lift by the tail. In addition, as the aircraft reaches equilibrium, more downward lift may be required. This is accomplished by moving the elevator toward the trailing edge up position. Consequently, the flap extension drives the horizontal stabilizer closer toward its stalling angle, particularly as the aircraft slows. This is when tailplane icing becomes a serious problem. A small amount of ice on the tailplane leading edge can interfere with airflow on the lower surface of the horizontal stabilizer, resulting in flow separation. This can decrease the stalling angle of attack and limit the amount of negative lift available. A sudden change in elevator hinge moment and forward stick force may overpower the pilot. When the flow comes in and sees the ice, it separates. But what happens just downstream of that separation point? What's there? Something's got to move in and fill that void. Well, usually it's the flow. It'll wrap around and create a separation bubble. That separation bubble has a reattachment point. As the tailplane angle of attack increases, this reattachment point will move aft. If it extends over enough of the elevator beyond the hinge point, now you have a movable control surface that will fill that void. So, what are some of the warning signs that could indicate a problem with the contaminated horizontal stabilizer? Individual pilots may perceive these warning signs at different times, depending upon the pilot's experience and icing conditions, the workload in the cockpit, and the intensity of the situation. Now, it should be noted that if you were flying on autopilot, you would almost certainly miss these symptoms because you would not get any tactile feedback from the controls. And here's what we found. Although these warning signs may vary slightly, depending upon the airfoil and the conditions. A lightening of the controls may be felt, specifically stick lightening in the forward direction, difficulty trimming the airplane, onset of pilot-induced oscillations, buffeting in the controls, not the airframe. Remember, many times these symptoms are encountered when flaps are at full extension. In extreme cases, there may be a sudden pulse-forward stick movement, possibly very strong. The nose of the aircraft may suddenly pitch down, and it is very possible that this may not be recoverable on final approach because of the low altitude of the aircraft. Symptoms of tailplane stall can actually be pretty subtle, or they, they actually can come right up and bite you. For instance, the normal progression is, uh, first you feel a lightning in the yoke, uh, particularly in the forward direction. And this can lead to PIO, which is pilot-induced oscillation. And this happens because the control balance has changed. Now it's uh, very easy to push forward on the yoke and much more difficult to pull aft. So you wind up with a pilot-induced oscillation situation. It can progress from there into the yoke actually trying to come out of your hands and go forward. You'll feel forward pulsations and forward movement on the yoke. The worst case scenario is where that yoke is actually snatched forward right to the stop and you're unable to pull it back. As a matter of fact, in some cases, and in our case in particular, we've had uh, force pressures of over 170 pounds of force in order to get the yoke back.
In order to measure the aerodynamic effects and control characteristics of tailplanes contaminated with ice, NASA conducted a series of flight tests in a modified de Havilland DH-6. To simulate various icing encounters, polyurethane ice castings were attached to the tailplane. The ice shapes were made from impressions taken from a full-scale DH-6 tailplane tested in the Lewis Icing Research Tunnel. The DH-6 was outfitted with instrumentation to monitor and record aircraft performance data, such as aircraft and tailplane angle of attack, airspeed, and tail surface pressure. All control surface deflections were recorded to measure the pilot input. Yoke and rudder control forces were also recorded. Video cameras monitored tufts attached to the lower surface of the horizontal stabilizer. Cockpit cameras captured pilot reactions and a view of the horizon during the maneuvers. So what did NASA researchers find out during flight testing? The results of the flight test reveal that there are three paths that can lead to tail stall conditions if the horizontal stabilizer is contaminated with ice. These are increasing flaps, increasing speed, increasing power. Let's take a closer look at the effects of each of these paths by reviewing some video recorded in flight by the research team. Now be aware, this work was conducted in a highly structured research environment with qualified test pilots and flight test engineers to interpret the many visual and real-time data cues that identify approaching tailplane stall conditions. Intentional maneuvers to induce tailplane stall are not recommended in a non-controlled environment. Here, the flaps were deflected from 0 to 40 degrees. Notice how the tailplane angle of attack becomes more negative and the tufts begin to destabilize. The yoke buffet indicates a separation and reattachment of airflow, making it difficult to keep the aircraft in pitch trim. With the flaps fixed at 40 degrees, as the speed is increased, the tufts at the leading edge are pointing upstream, indicating full reversal of flow. The tufts that are aft of the leading edge area indicate turbulent airflow on the rest of the horizontal stabilizer. As the speed continues to increase, flow separation and reattachment cause the elevator to buffet. It wants to pitch over very badly right now. Pitch stability is very, very difficult. I'm starting a small oscillation. In this maneuver, there was no ice shape attached to the stabilizer. Power was increased slowly while the speed was held constant. Observe that there is very little tuft activity. Now watch what happens as the same maneuver is flown with an ice shape attached. Notice that even with the power at idle, the tufts at the leading edge indicate full flow reversal. The tufts aft of this area indicate minor turbulence. As power increases, the pilot brings the elevator up in order to maintain speed. The separation and reattachment of the airflow at the elevator trailing edge causes the buffet. 